not every prosecutor. It tends to be the same, the same uh, actors over and over. There, there have been discussions in the Arizona Supreme Court about specific prosecutors saying, what can we do about this short of throwing the case out? Can I ask you a question about something that nobody's discussed so far? <laughs> um, the, the conduct of the trial prosecutor. It, it seems to me that at least on several occasions, and by and large the objections were sustained, the, the trial prosecutor either ignored rulings by the trial judge or asked questions that the trial judge once ruled improper and then rephrased the question in another improper way. And I, I take your argument from your brief that, that even if there was error, it, wasn't, it didn't arise to the level of reversible error. But I've asked this question in several cases so far, so I'm interested in your reaction to it. Short of reversing a conviction, how is it that we can, we can stop inappropriate conduct? And um, I understand you may argue that it wasn't inappropriate, but assume for a second that it was. Uh, reversing a conviction is a, is a large, is a very drastic remedy, particularly in a case where the judge sustained the objections, told the jury that, that they should disregard arguments and that, that, but how is it that we, we seem to see this on a relatively recurrent basis? And I'm wondering if, if the state can help us out and how we should deal with these issues. Well, I can just tell you personally as a former prosecutor, if, if a trial court or an appellate court had found that I had acted inappropriately but that it didn't rise to the level of reversal and named me in their opinion and said that they didn't think that I had behaved appropriately, that would have had a tremendous impact on me and it would have had a tremendous impact on everybody in the prosecuting agency I work for. It's happened before. Um, I think prosecutors take it very, very seriously. Well, this, this prosecutor, I, I recollect from several cases, the same prosecutor has been accused of fairly serious misconduct, but ultimately we decided to not uh, rise to the level requiring reversal. Well, I can't... I, I, there's something about this prosecutor, and I'll, Mr. Martinez. I mean, right. I, I haven't reviewed the other appellate cases where perhaps this court found that he had behaved appropriately, but it didn't rise to the level of reversal. Um, the judge sustained an objection to a question. Then he re-asked the question, not once, but twice more. Three times. I mean, it was an objectionable question. To. Um, I can What's the expert's fee? The fees. But who's, did his argument, to be fair, was referring to questions that he'd asked during trial. And as right. I understand it, his argument was, well, the expert changed his view while he was under examination. And the judge quite appropriately sustained that objection, saying, no, no, what the record reflects is your first question was, how much have you charged so far? Your next question was, how much will you eventually charge? You got two different answers to that quite naturally, but you can't then argue from that to the jury that the expert was waffling on how much they charged. And the judge made that quite clear, I think, three times during the, during the argument. The argument about comparing the defendant to the victim. I think we've said any number of times that's not an appropriate argument. Well, any, anything, our case law indicates that anything can be mitigating. The defendant has the jury a pulse considers to be mitigating. It, considers yes. it to be such. But as I understand it, the response to that was, well, yes, the defendant will be locked up and denied some access to his family, uh, but the the victim is dead and has no access to his. It seems to me that's a comparison of the, vic of the victim to the defendant, is I, it not? I, it seems to me not at all relevant to that victim impact evidence to say, to say that the victim is in a different circumstance than the defendant. It, it, it doesn't rebut the family's loss or grief to, to point out that the victim, that the defendant is still alive and the victim is not. That, that, that doesn't go to the... Well, is the statement... Again, I'm not sure it rises to the level of reversible error in this case, but... So basically... Prosecutors like Juan Martinez can do whatever they want with little repercussion. And higher courts are afraid to step on the toes of their little brothers and sisters in the lower courts. That's right, Dr. Due Process. So prosecutors like Juan Martinez can continue to do things like this while being celebrated as the Arizona Prosecutor of the Year rather than be admonished or even stripped of his law license.